Look away, look away, look away, look away, look away. Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and today I'm planting some bare root perennials. So about a week and a half ago, I received four giant boxes from Ball, that's the company that took over for my wholesaler, Edney Glockner. So Ball sent me four giant boxes of bare root perennials. So I've got so many things. I've got columbine, phlox, aruncus, which is like a goat's beard. I have a stillbees, I have, well I also have these. These are called loose strife. Now this is a gooseneck loose strife. It's the white one. This is the one that's not considered invasive all although it does spread. So I'm putting it here in this 70 foot bed. I have 50 of these bare roots. I'm not gonna put all of them in here, but I'm gonna put most of them in this bed right here. And it will take up the entire bed eventually. It has runners, so it spreads like a raspberry wood with the runners, and I'll show you one in just a second. A lot of people warn about growing loose strife because some varieties are considered invasive species, but this one I'm gonna be able to control because I'm mowing the outside of the bush. So that will keep the runners from spreading. It doesn't spread by seed, although it probably could, but it more typically spreads by runners. So by mowing that entire rectangle all the way around it every single year, that'll prevent them from spreading and taking over my whole yard. <laughs> so what I did here, oh, let me show you the plant itself first. So here's a good example of one of the bare roots. So it's got the, the stalk from last year, I guess, and then the roots going out. But look at these runners. They look like little asparagus. They just wanna grow up into the world. So I'm gonna be putting this into the ground just a bit, probably down to there. Make sure all the root system is covered. And I'm also gonna be amending the bed with some hummus and some compost. Now, normally I have a dump truck come and dump several yards of compost. That just hasn't happened this year yet. So I went over to my local tractor supply company and I purchased some bags of hummus and organic compost mix. And it was fairly inexpensive. It was $2.49 a bag. And I'm only gonna be like spot treating where I plant this. I'll incorporate it right into the soil. Look at this one. This is like spaghetti. Now for landscaping, it says to plant these about three feet apart. I'm gonna plant them a little bit closer. I'm gonna go with two feet apart and see what happens. If I have to thin them, which you're supposed to thin them every few years take like parts away and stuff and either plant them somewhere else or give them away but I'm gonna plant them two feet apart to start and see what happens let's do it Okay, so I ended up putting 47 in the ground and I, I held three back. One, because I think I'm gonna give one to Gina. Um, and then also, I want to have a couple. Oh God, am I gonna get, oh. I thought I was gonna hit myself with this because that's happened before. <laughs> uh, so I saved myself three and one I think is for Gina. And then look at these ones. I wanna have a couple by the porch not for cutting but just to have kind of i just think it would be really pretty with the goosenecks i love it at my neighbor's house I, i've mentioned this in a video before so my neighbor actually has three of these plants along a portion of a rock wall and a pond that she has in her backyard and this is where i fell in love with them they're also highly recommended by dave dowling the cut flower expert he says you shouldn't have cut flower garden if you don't have gooseneck loose strife so a lot of people are, there's gonna be comments on here saying you should never grow it. Worst mistake I ever made. They're popping up all over my yard. You have to have a way to manage it. Otherwise it will take over a space. Even though it's not considered invasive where it's on an invasive species list, 
it still does take over areas if you let it. Now containing it in this rectangle and mowing around it all year long, that will be my management for this species. That's exactly what my neighbor does. She's had it there for years and she has no problems because she mows around. She has a section where it's just a defined section where it is and she mows around it, therefore limiting the spread of the plant. So they actually have a vase life of around 10 days and they're absolutely one of those beautiful, textury, creative, flowy elements that you can add to a bouquet. Even if you're not putting in a cut flower garden and you're just landscaping, consider putting in one of these plants for that just whimsical element. It's really beautiful. Okay, so now that I have these in the ground, I am gonna go show you guys the rest of the perennials that I'll be planting over the next couple of days. Let's go look. Oh, I used one and a half, well, a little more than one and a half bags of this hummus which I don't think is bad. I picked up 15 bags to do all of these bare root perennials. The rest, you know, I'll, I'll get that load of compost. It's just not here yet. I don't have I, the dump truck guy. I gotta figure it out with the dump truck guy. Cause you, you, know, you need a dump truck. You can't just go there with my car and have them put this in my back of my car. I mean, I suppose I could. Oh God, it's difficult for me to stand up. I started a new workout program and I'm on, I just finished day three. I'm very sore, but I can't, I, even though I have like five to six hours of heavy, intense garden work, I committed to this program and I'm seeing it through. I'm doing it. It's just gonna take me a minute to get up. Oh my God, it was leg day. I should probably mention that the gooseneck stopped there and I actually still have a 20 foot section of a uh, row here that I can plant something else. So I'm gonna take a look at my other perennials that I got bare root and see what I can put out here. So far, the chickens have not bothered me. They don't know I'm out here. I'm still waiting for that first crack of a daffodil. These are the uh, ones that come first. These are most of my trumpets. I, I uncovered some of the leaves the other day. They're still there. They're still there. Nice little layer of, of leaves, but look at all of those just flower buds just waiting, just waiting to crack. Whew, it's getting warm out. It's in the mid 60s and the sun's shining, it's beautiful. So I'm up here on the porch with one of the boxes that the perennial bare roots came in. Let's look at them. Okay, so I got a lot of columbine. I already planted one variety, but these are some more of the columbine bare roots. This bag is open. Actually, this is the one that I already planted. So this, I saved these because I also want to plant some of these along the porch. You know, any of those uh, perennials that I want to plant that, oh, this one broke. So this is a bare root columbine, and this is the variety they already put into the ground. This is called William Guinness. I actually ordered, I think, six varieties of columbine. I think eight eight varieties of columbine. I'm putting them in a wooded section. It's the very edge of my forest where I get some morning sun and then it's in the shade all afternoon. So I'm gonna see how they perform there. So that's, the other ones going down there are white barlow. And I think that's the last in this box. I'll have to go get another box to go through the rest of them. So this, we have some echinacea. So I'm excited because I'm starting echinacea from seed and I also bought some bare roots. So I have white swan and these ones are starting to grow up a little bit. So this is an echinacea bare root. It's got some great growth to it. Definitely gonna be planting these. Now, echinacea tends to be deer resistant, but the deer will nibble on the tender babies. So I'm still undecided whether or not I'm gonna put these inside the deer fence, because they're a perennial, or if I'm gonna go ahead and put them on the other end of the, uh, the gooseneck. If maybe if I protect them when they're young, maybe if I protect them. Put a little bit of a protector around them when they're young. Yeah, I think I'll do that. So in this, I have the purple echinacea, and I think it's really cool because you can see the difference between the white swan and the purple. Holy guacamole. This one's huge. Okay, so the purple echinacea has purple little roots, whereas the white swan has a whitish yellow. It almost looks like the middle of celery, but the purple echinacea is purple. And then the last thing I have in this box is some phlox. So I have some Popeye phlox. This will definitely go inside the deer fence because deer will eat this all day long. It's just a weird bird noise. Weird birds. Next box. Box number two. So this one has a lot of a stilby in it. The stilby is very exciting. I uh, one of those like textury puffy things. 
Uh, let's see, and they're hard, they're very hardy, zone three. So I'm excited to grow it here. A lot of my neighbors do it. This one right here is called Bressingham Beauty. This is a, a solo pegger, but really it's sometimes you get bare root and they don't even have any growth at all or they just have little tiny eyes. These, because they were sitting for over a week, kind of started to grow inside of their bag. So it's best if you can you know, get them and get them planted right away. Uh, a lot of times you have to soak bare roots these are really, I think there's a couple bags in here that I'll soak, but for the most part, they were packed so well and they have such great moist roots already that I'm not gonna need to do anything before planting. So these are the Brassingham Beauties. There's 25 of those. This is Aruncus, which is goat's beard. This is dry. I'm gonna have to soak these. These roots are very dry. They don't look dead, which is a good thing. They still have some white growth to them, but I'm gonna soak this whole bag even the peat is dry okay this one's gonna have to get soaked but this is uh one of the goat's beards goat's beards astocephalus all right this is hookera so i have uh palace i think yeah palace purple hookera and you can see the purple it's uh definitely gonna be amazing i actually got uh 25 of these and i do plan on putting them in the shade area in front of my porch so lots of plans for the front porch area. Ooh, oh my gosh, I forgot. This is also some more echinacea. This is the double decker echinacea, which is amazing looking. And they also have the deep purple roots. Ooh, another box of echinacea. Oops, I forgot about all these. This is green twister, yes, green Twister. These roots look super healthy and delicious. They all need to get in the ground. Over here I have more phlox. This is a sherbet blend of phlox. I don't remember ordering this one. This is another bag of Aruncus, which is another goat beard. This one's just a different kind. It's called Diochus. Di Diochus. 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 Another bag of phlox. See, this is more like what this was at the bottom of the box, okay? So they didn't have any light exposure to it. This is more like what a bare root looks like when it comes to you. Dropping bags, dropping bags. So normally, not all the time, but normally when a bare root comes to you, it'll look something more like this, dead. <laughs> you can see a little bit of an eye right there, tiny. But this is more like what you get when you order bare root. Because these have been sitting in their boxes, the stuff on top had a little bit of light exposure because this was this was um, closed, but the tape on top is clear. So there was like maybe a quarter of an inch of light exposure. They basically all started to come out of dormancy because of that little sliver of light. But this bag was on the very bottom, so this looks like more what a bare root would look like when you get them in the mail. Here's another bag of Aruncus. Wait, is this the one that I just talked about? This is the same bag of Aruncus that I just spoke about. <laughs> Box three! Box number three, and I believe this one is full of the rest of the Columbine, okay. Okay, so basically they're gonna look the same, except for they're slightly colored differently. There's black Barlow, there's Bordeaux Barlow, which obviously would be like a cranberry raspberry color. There is blue Barlow, there is Pinky Winky, double pink and white. <laughs> Love that one. Uh, okay, so my teenage daughter, look how look how adorable. It's here with Bella, her BFF Bella. Um, you guys wanna help me plant 600 things? No. <laughs> I mean. How about 25? Sure, that sounds how about, easy. What's that, what does that sound? Easy. Easy. Easy, she says. 25 compared to 600 is easy. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The rest of the things that I have in here are the rest of the columbines. I said that already. I stopped abruptly because I noticed something in here that I thought was missing. It's not missing, it's right here. So the rest of the columbines and the hellebores that I thought I was missing, they are right here and they need to get in the ground ASAP. So I didn't see them the first time I looked through the package. Okay, I have more and more and more columbines. We've got Nora Barlow, which I'm excited about. Oh, there's some more flocks in here too. We have flocks, bright eyes, like Bella, bright eyes, Bella. I have brown eyes. They're so bright. Just because they're not blue doesn't mean they're not bright. Oh, here's my confirmation. Hellebore. Yeah, it's in here. Uh, okay, I said the blue barlow. We've got oh, the pinky winky. No, it's the it's the winky double blue. It's the winky tinky. It's the winky tinky. <laughs> and then we've got 
Oh, right. Oh, God. These need to get in the ground immediately. The, this was my splurge. This was the most expensive one that I purchased. It was the um, Dark Chocoholic Simifuja. Simicafuja? How do you, what's the actual? Simicafuja Hamaha. Simicafuja Hamaha. The girl said it's Simicafuja The girl. Girls, I said. Ow. Did you hit your elbow? <laughs> Simicafuja, Ramosa Chocoholic number one. Yes, they are similar to the gooseneck, except they have a dark chocolate stem. Okay, so that's box number three. I have a fourth box. Sorry, I just had an impromptu photo shoot with two teenage girls on the porch. <laughs> We're done now. Okay, box number four. Um, I love, I love taking pictures with kids. So, especially when they have friends over, because I think this is the first time that Veda's had a friend over in a year. So, in this box are the, like, we got a Stilbies, a lot of the Stilbies. We have Diamante, we've got Milk and Honey. And these are like, get me in the ground now, please. And then we have a Fennel. And, ooh, Visions in Pink. This bag is quite large, larger than the rest for some reason. So they look really healthy, really nice, really good. Gotta get them in the ground. Um, so that's what we're doing. I'm kind of letting all, opening all the boxes today, getting as many in the ground as I can. And then, like, I'll, I'm off for the next four days. So over the next four days, I'm gonna be getting as many in the ground that I can. Well, really, all of them. Brad Pitt took a day off too to help me. I can't tell you how many videos I've started and then never finished over the past two weeks. I've just been so incredibly busy actually doing the things that stopping and taking the time to show the things, uh, it's a little bit overwhelming at times. I'm trying to keep up and do my best. Hopefully soon I'll have more time to do that. So right now my porch is covered in all the things that need to be planted over the next, what's today, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I have these next five days and I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm petering out, guy. I'm like tired after putting those 50 in the ground and after like my workout this morning and all the errands that I had to run, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling tired, my whole body hurts, but I'm gonna push through and I'm gonna get it done. So over here I have sweet peas, stock, ranculus. I've gotta get them in the ground as well. So it's gonna be a lot of planting this weekend. Like I said, Brad took Friday off, so he's gonna get the tractor up and running, can make me some new rows, and we're just gonna get everything in the ground that's on this porch. Those four boxes of bare root perennials, plus all of these hardy annuals, we're gonna get those in the ground as well. This tray of sweet peas though, I have, this is, looks, oh, it just looks so good. So this is the issue where I had the thrip issue and the thrip issue is, is gone. And I have uh, just some beautiful plants that are ready to get in the ground. A lot of you have been asking if it was safe to plant bare root perennials in the spring before the last frost has passed, and yes. Typically the bare root perennials will come to you in a state of dormancy and you wanna get them in the ground as soon as you can, as soon as you can work that soil. That way they can wake up and break dormancy in their new home. Some of mine have already broken dormancy and that's okay. Those, as soon as the sun gets on those plants, they'll start to green up and they'll be okay. They do have some tender shoots and that's okay. Some of them might be a little bit damaged from a late spring frost but in general they'll be okay and if not they usually will send up new shoots as well anyway guys I'm gonna stop this video here and I'm gonna work on getting the rest of these bare roots in the ground thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you soon hummus and cotton organic and goat's beard Ooh, the wind is nice it's a when I saw I think Bella knows what a cow giving birth sounds like I know plenty of cows giving birth. she's she's seen the whole thing Oh, God. <laughs>